Well, if you're a gun voter in Fremont County, you have a choice to make in the upcoming August 20 Republican Party primary. Senator Tim Salazar versus challenger Elizabeth Philp. Who's going to fight for your gun rights in the Wyoming Senate? Stay tuned, guys. We're breaking this race down for you right now. Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here with Wyoming Gun Owners. The August primary is coming up quick and WIGO's working on, on doing ads and emails and radio ads and all kinds of social media covering races all across the state. And to be very honest, we weren't going to cover this race in Fremont County. Elizabeth does not seem to be actively campaigning as far as we can tell. Didn't mention guns on her website, did not do our survey, that's never a good sign. But we don't see an active campaign underway here on the part of Ms. Phil. And so we weren't going to cover the race, to be very honest. But then we had a phone call in the office a couple days ago from a guy in Fremont County. And he says, hey, I want to know about Senator Salazar. Is he pro-gun? And I kind of started laughing on the phone for a moment. And I was like, are you, are you new? Are you been under a rock? What's the, well, actually he was new. He had just moved here very recently from a blue state, trying to get away from the tyranny of a blue state. It was, uh, it was uh, Oregon, but we're not going to hold him guilty for living there. And he moves in and he wants to get active in the fight for gun rights. He joins Wyoming gun owners, which is always a good thing. And then he wants to get involved in the primaries. So he calls and says, is my Senator pro gun? And I had to walk him through a story that I thought would be beneficial for anybody else out there who doesn't know the history of Tim Salazar when it comes to the fight for gun rights here in Wyoming. The story actually has to begin quite a ways back now in 2018. At that time, Wyoming did not have stand your ground law. It's hard to believe, but if you drew your firearm in a public place, uh, a parking lot, for example, to defend your wife and your kids from a violent predator, you'd have to retreat an arbitrary number of steps before using defensive force. It's crazy, but it's true. And if you use offensive force in the wrong county and you hadn't backed up enough steps first, you could be charged and go to prison. In 2018, WIGO went to fix that problem, and it was Tim Salazar who was the lead sponsor on the bill. The bill number was House Bill 168. It was a long fight. It was an arduous fight. We had lots of setbacks and lots of uh, attempts to weaken or undermine stand your ground law. In fact, Governor Mead, Rhino Governor Mead, wouldn't even sign it into law, but it passed into law because he did not uh, veto it either. Big fight. It, it took all session long to get it done, and every step of the way, from the introductory process, the co-sponsor push, the committee push, uh, getting it passed over on the Senate side, back over to the House side, pressuring the governor, every step of the way, Tim Salazar was there to deliver one of the biggest gun rights victories in the state in a very long time. It was his bill, House Bill 168. Want to fast forward 2021, we had a cleanup underway for constitutional carry. WIGO, when it was first founded, was founded to, to a pass constitutional carry. That, that was accomplished in 2021. Our founder, Anthony Bouchard, got that done. But at that time, the rhinos limited constitutional carry to residents of the state only. And that might sound like a small thing, because if you live here, it's no big deal. But a lot of folks don't live here who want to come through the state. And if they assume that constitutional carry applies to them and they're stopped in the wrong jurisdiction, they could be and were criminally charged because you had to have a permit if you were not a resident. House Bill 116, that passed in 2021. Tim Salazar was not the lead sponsor, but he was one of the leading co-sponsors on that bill, and he helped us deliver that victory for gun owners in 2021. But it was also the year when I saw perhaps the most, uh, the most amount of guts that I've ever seen from a lawmaker in Cheyenne. 2021, WIGO was also trying to pass our big goal, which was the Second Amendment Preservation Act. Now, at this point, Salazar is in the Senate. He's over on the, on the other chamber where he is now. We're pushing SAPA in both chambers. The bill number in the Senate was Senate File 81. Now, think back. Joe Biden, his first year in the White House, the guy is unleashing hell on gun owners all across the country. And what's happening is they're, they're trying to use local cops, our troopers, our deputies, our city cops to enforce federal executive orders that are attacking our gun rights, bump stock bans, 
pistol braces, firearms dealer redefinitions. It was an onslaught of tyranny because the guy couldn't get it passed in Congress, and instead, he circumvents Congress, signs an executive order, and tells the ATF to enforce it. Well, what that means is ATF tells Wyoming to enforce it. So we're pushing SAPA. The rhinos, and there's a ton of rhinos here in Cheyenne, they don't like SAPA. So they take an amendment, they put an amendment onto the bill, this is Senate File 81, and uh, it was horrible. It gutted, destroyed the Second Amendment Preservation Act. And the SOBs who did that sat there on the Senate floor laughing at Tim Salazar and all the rest of the conservative champions in the Senate because they thought they put them on the horns of a dilemma. Were they then going to vote for the bill on final passage in its weakened, gutted form? Or would they actually vote against a bill that they themselves had authored and co-sponsored? Most politicians in that situation would vote for the bill even though it was destroyed, even though it was a cover vote, just because they were worried about the optics of voting no on a what was perceived to be a pro-gun bill. That's the easy play. That's the smart play. That's what most people would do. Tim Salazar on the Senate floor stood up and voted no on weakened, destroyed, gutted SAPA legislation because he knew it would do nothing to protect gun owners here in Wyoming and would only be used to prop up anti-gun rhinos. He knew that in doing that, he could be attacked, and he did not care. It was the right thing, and Tim Salazar voted no on fake SAPA in 2021. One of the gutsiest things I ever saw done in the Wyoming Senate. Fast forward to this year, we'll kind of wind it down here. As you guys all know, we passed Senate File 109. This was our bill, a signature bill, first of its kind in the country to ban red flag gun seizures. You guys all know what a red flag law is. Someone says you're dangerous. They tell the cops. The cops ask the judge for a seizure order. The judges rubber stamp them because they always rubber stamp them. And you come home from work, all your guns are gone. Your front door is kicked down and your guns have been seized. No arrests, no indictments, no convictions, hell, no charges. <laughs> Just your guns are gone. That's the reality in places like nearby Colorado. Here in, here in Wyoming, we have fixed that problem for good with Senate File 109. Guys, it was a big fight. Of course, the rhinos hated it. The media went buck wild crazy. They hated it. And Tim Salazar, one of the leading co-sponsors on that bill, he fought for it in the process. Happy to be a part of that as a co-sponsor. Tim Salazar, again, delivered for gun owners with Senate File 109. And that brings up the last big fight I'm going to talk to you about. House Bill 125. You guys probably heard about this. This would get rid of deadly gun-free zones here in Wyoming. We got a lot of them. We got a lot of gun-free zones. These are all targets to dangerous people, violent predators who want to attack innocent, helpless people in Wyoming. We all know it. Everyone knows it. HB 125 would address all of that, but it was killed in judiciary by all the rhinos who run the committee. They thought that was the end. They thought that was the final vote. It was done. Case over. Uh, you know, Sent us all home. But it was Tim Salazar, it was uh, Senator Kinski, and others that night, that evening, who said, this is BS, this will not stand. And the next morning, they invoked procedural rules on the Senate floor to uh, resurrect HB 125 to drag it out of that kill committee and put it on the floor for consideration. The rhinos howled at this. I was there in the gallery. They were enraged. How dare you? Salazar and all the rest of these good guys held their ground and said, we're not going to let a bunch of rhinos in the Judiciary Committee kill the most important bill to gun owners this year in Wyoming. Well, second most. SF-109 was the most important so he delivered again, and we got the bill resurrected from committee onto the floor. And when that happened, the rhinos called for a caucus, and they had they had a, they wanted to catch their breath, wanted to reconvene. And the next day, they come back and say, okay, if we can't kill the bill in committee, if we couldn't kill the bill on the recommittal vote, all we can do now is amendments on the floor. And they did. Amendment after amendment after amendment designed to weaken gun-free zone repeal. They wanted to make uh, hospitals exempt. They wanted to make college campuses exempt. They wanted to make other educational facilities exempt. Their list of exemptions was so big, it would negate the entire purpose of HB 125 in the first place. 
And it was Tim Salazar who got on the floor and fought like a dog to make sure all those amendments failed, to make sure HB 125 passed in good form, and he got it done again for gun owners here in Wyoming. As you guys know, the governor vetoed it, and the last fight then, the session, took place after we were adjourned. If we were adjourned, we could have had the, the vote to override Governor Gordon's veto and ram HB 125 right down his throat. But we were adjourned. And so the only way to come back in a session is to have enough votes in the House and Senate to convene a special session. And again, Tim Salazar was there. He was a yes vote on the motion to have a special session. Unfortunately, while we had enough votes, thanks to Tim Salazar, in the Senate, we lacked the votes in the House. There's a lot more rhinos per capita in the House. That bill did not get fixed because there was no special session, but that fight will be dealt with, I assure you, come next year. But in context, you've got 2018 through 2024, you've got six years of Tim Salazar fighting relentlessly for gun voters here in Wyoming. Stand your ground law, SAPA, gun-free zone repeal, banning red flags on the floor, in committee, procedural stuff, all of it. Tim Salazar, 100% pro-gun. That's why we call him a warrior for gun rights. And so I told all of this to the guy on the phone, and he was, he was shocked. He didn't even know what to say. He, he'd never heard of a legislator, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a, a statesman who would fight so hard for gun rights. And he just happened to move into Wyoming, and he happened to move into Fremont County. Guys, that's our recap. That's our story on Senator Salazar. Do me a favor. Share it on social media. You can, you can find it on Twitter. You can find it on uh, YouTube. You can find our Facebook page, website. Wherever you're watching this, be sure and share it. Tag your friends in the comment section. Make sure everyone knows what Tim Salazar has done for gun rights in Wyoming. Guys, get involved in the fight today at joinwigo.com. <laughs>